Oh. Okay, I'd be safe and warm if I was in L.A. I suppose if I say any more lyrics, I'll, uh, I'll be pursued. Um, Alanis Coffee is a longtime friend of Coffee Con L.A. Uh, from our very first show, which was held, by the way, at the Max Senate uh, Film Studio uh, years ago. And uh, Eric and Aaron co-founded their own bean shop and cafe located in Mar Vista. And Mar Vista is, let's see, I'm trying to remember my L.A. neighborhoods. Uh, it's sandwiched between Venice and Culver City uh, in L.A., uh, Eric has the coolest vintage Chemex collection I know of, which goes perfect with his vintage Volkswagen. Uh, I remember going there one evening, and uh, the Volkswagen Collectors Club was meeting there, and Eric uh, took me in the back, and made, this is like at 9 o'clock at night, he's made me a, a pour-over in his vintage Chemex, and I could not turn it down. <laughs> it was I just one smell. As good as I think my Chemex coffee can taste, I know of no one more qualified to teach us a simple, fun, and common sense Chemex pour. Eric, how are you? Hey, doing really good. How are you, Kevin? I'm doing fantastic, and it's great to see you. Totally cool. Definitely. How's the weather today? Uh, not too bad, actually. Probably close to around 70-something again, definitely. <laughs> Every I time mean, we talk, we're it blessed. Seems, yeah, it's uh, you are. Yeah. And anyway, I'm 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 glad uh, to see like you. We had like an 83. <laughs> wow. Well, we're it's coming this way. It's sunny today here in the in the Midwest, frosty Chicago. But it's it's at least it's sunny. I, I have a question for you. Uh, what yeah. Chemex do you have there in front of you? This one this is a good old pint. This is probably a 1960. It's extremely thick. Good old green label. Yeah. I love my vented stuff for sure. Um, Going to be rocking on an unplugged warmer today, but still it's pretty cool because it's nice and vintage as well. Nice little warmer they created back in the yes. early 60s right. or late 70s. You put hot water in it? Is that what it does? It, it's, it's right. It sits in a bed of hot water. Is that correct? The, the coffee No, makers? that's the copper bath. Oh, that's the that, copper that's bath. That's the copper Copper bath, yeah, okay. that came out before the electric warmer, definitely. This is their first electric warmer. Looks like a UFO, which is pretty cool. Pretty <laughs> out of this world. <laughs> Probably was back then, let me tell you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, it was, yeah, they had the, Roswell had just, you know, been fairly recent, so they had just found the, tech, the Martian technology that helped them make these products. Definitely. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, thankfully, we need them. <laughs> Agreed. Well, I'll let you uh, do, pre do your presentation, and then if I get any questions, I'll, I'll hold them for the end, but uh, I'm sure we will. Okay. All right, thanks. Beautiful. Heck yeah. All right, today, guys, we're going to brew the perfect Chemex. So normally at Alana's Coffee, we do a uh, 16 to 1 ratio. I'm going to brew a nice little 16-ounce uh, cup. It would be basically right to the dot in the pint here. Maybe a little shy. Roughly, like to get about a three and a half, four minute with something like this. That's usually what we'll get. Today I'm gonna to be brewing one of what we're kind of noticed for and definitely miss going to Coffee Con very bad. We love the audience, we love the ambiance, and we love Kevin and Patty a lot. That was a wonderful experience every year we did it, so. Thank you guys for allowing me to be here this year, even virtual. This is, this is awesome. So, definitely. So, got my hot water. Probably, and of course, I don't have my scale, but uh, about like a cupping in a sense. So, you want to basically, I don't know, moisten the grounds a bit. And to where you see it start to trickle, I would wait. Depending on your coffee, we brew a lot of coffee that's maybe a day or two off rest and whatnot, but it's going to bubble up a lot more than others. But when you see a stream dripping, you're gradually about ready to start getting your second pour. Usually wait about 35, 45 seconds, and then I'll get my second damp on. And again, it's kind of like cupping if you're extremely used to cupping, because basically what you want to do is thus wet the grounds, get them to bloom, and then at that point, you kind of want to knock the, all the top grounds down so they're going to be in the water and they're going to be able to brew all uniquely. 
and consistently because basically I was always taught that you kind of want a coffee wall and this and that. This is many, many, many years ago of pour overs, but now we definitely know that we would like to bring it up enough to saturate the grounds, but then to work semi like an arrow press or something in that matter to where the water works above it and just almost works as a little pressure steep amongst the top. I like to normally probably do about two or three rounds on it. And on the third pour, I'll normally knock down some of the grounds along the side. But during this, I like to keep it no higher than when I brought my second pour. Because at the moment, we have everything saturating at the same time, which means you're going to get a consistent brew. Consistently, you would like it to end pretty flat. Some people stir the grounds. Some people agitate them towards the end. You may do that. I just don't, but hey, on a Chemex, I don't. On a Hario, I definitely will. On a Kleda, I probably will, even though they say not to, but you know, I do that. But pretty much, I've always been a Chemex fiend, Chemex fan, been a major collector. Of pretty cool things like little vintage 60s cups that they don't even make anymore. Way different style lid than you're probably used to seeing than the gnarly chunk nowadays. But these are unique because one, it is a Chemex cup, and two, once you're finished, it could work as an off drip for your filter, and then you use your lid. Schellenblum thought of a lot of things back then. <laughs> he was a busy man in the 50s and 40s, and threw out. So there, pretty much start to knock down my sidewall to start thus just bringing up my level to where I bored the second time. Just nicely wait till you get to that bead. And normally on the pint, of course, the bead setting is normally going to be set around a 16 ounce on most Chemex, except for the smallest one, probably set around a 12, maybe even 11. But by far, we still do Chemexes to this day at the shop every day. It's going to be something that we always do. And we actually brew in a Chemex that is a lot larger than this, and they actually stopped making them in about 1974 or 5. I don't think they sold very well. It was a double dot, so you can actually get 32 ounces out of it, which is pretty cool. Takes roughly 10 to 15 minutes is probably another reason why they found it wasn't very good, but we figured out a way to pretty much adjust the grind, get the TDS correct, and... Uh, it's tasting real good in about six minutes, so. That's probably my final pour here. I'm gonna let that extract. We should be just about mid-base in the line and create some really nice body, really smooth textures to the coffee, because yep. at the moment, yep. 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 brewing up a nice Ethiopia. It's a natural process, already that I've been pretty much known for along the uh, coffee con scene for the blueberries. Has anybody had the blueberries, which is pretty cool. <laughs> and uh, so today, experiencing nice raspberry notes, little orange rind. Off the bag. Ah. Off the bag. I'm sorry. I lost it. Ah. Okay. Little orange rind, beautiful blueberry, little raspberry and a chocolatey finish, but one of the smoothest and uh, fruitier Ethiopians I've found in quite a bit. And been having this coffee for probably the last four or five years now. It's been uh, almost an Alana staple, we could say, definitely. It's all yeah, about the arty. <laughs> Should I pull back up? Mm -hmm. Oh, take it out. All right. Finishing up the brew here. We do it to about the bottom of the dot. It's a little more body in. Those final drips are always our favorite. <laughs> Heck yeah. The aroma of blueberries and chocolate is surreal in the house. That I promise. <clears throat> All right. Heck yeah. So, instead of making such a huge mess, Get it a brew in there. And then, beautiful old school series. 
And voila, the perfect brew. <laughs> now, this is definitely a fun thing here. A little creative uh, Chemex as well. We have a nice little collar that's actually available on the Chemex website. Um, you can as well possibly check them out on Instagram at Epic LA Justin. And uh, he makes about any and everything you can believe made out of creative old used wow. skateboards. But, man, one thing we don't have, I believe, are some, oh, wait, wait, some cups to try it. That's the perfect gimmicks, <laughs> for sure. Fabulous, Eric. Fabulous. Wow. Is that, I, I, I'm telling you, this, this is the, well, you know, it's the challenge. You know, we're online. I like <laughs> seeing it. I just want to reach through the computer screen and take a cup from you. Yeah, hey, this, definitely. This you, I hope you were brewing along with me. I, I, <laughs> I, I'm, I'm not, actually. I, I did just... Oh, wow. Uh, no, but I will later. I, I And uh, the Ethiopian... Oh, man, that... Uh, My favorite coffee on the planet. I, I'm Love telling Ethiopian you, this coffee. is a natural, About more right? than anything. Yeah, it's a natural. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, what a beautiful yeah, coffee. Yeah, natural Sadama. Yes. This one was uh, done at the De Bensa, uh, De Bensa drying and uh, washing station in Ethiopia in Sadama. Oh, my gosh. Those are uh, wonderful coffees. You know, it's, uh, some people know and some people don't. Perhaps the first coffee. I mean, you know, is he, we're Ethiopian, correct? Is that uh, what you've heard? Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, I mean, that's where they got the wild goats jumping yeah. around, supposedly, and they came across that fruit. Yeah, that <laughs> wild goat story is, I don't know, but the, the, the whole thing, you know. <laughs> hey, it sounds good, right? <laughs> it's a great story. It sounds like someone at, at mar a marketing company came up with it, but it's still, it's wonderful. But uh, the, uh, hey, I have a couple of questions here from people. Uh, Johnny in Jacksonville, totally. Florida. Why does the Chemex need a coarse grind? Well, it just depends, honestly, on what you're looking for. I mean, you could, roughly, you would like to get a brew out within three to four minutes. And that's at anything between a 12 to a 16 ounce at that point. You kind of just have to adjust it to get that ratio. Um, if you go finer, it could, you'll find it will puddle up. If you're too aggressive with your pour, then it could become a little more confusing. So we find that using something around, I don't know, a little more than table salt, coarser, closer to maybe a, uh, just a coarse salt, but not quite a French press grind, but definitely a good, good medium, medium grind to get the proper flow, or you're definitely going to get channeling, backing up, and a bitter cup due to over extraction. You know, I've always wondered if it's uh, the, the filter for the Chemex is definitely uh -huh. has a heavier, f you know, a uh, it's a real, <laughs> real filter. It's got it, it and it's thicker. I don't know if it, uh, yeah, I think it pours slower, goes through there slower. So, in some ways, maybe that's why it extends, prolongs the uh, contact time. They always recommend it, a coarser I, I, grind. Yeah, and I feel also with the Chemex, I mean, the Chemex design alone can be recreated, obviously, since 1941 to today, and they've changed in a bit, but I don't believe that filter's changed in any way, so a lot of it is due to that special filter, which nowadays are pretty rare. I <laughs> just got uh, lucky to get a couple cases yesterday. I, I've <laughs> so heard that. Funny, but man, let me tell you, it's, been it's all about that filter, yeah. which is all about Chemex. Yeah, it's, oh no, I, oh, well that gets into the next question. Wilma in Aurora, Colorado. What, well, uh, <laughs> Wilma, you're just about to get a mouthful from us. Uh, what do you think of metal filters for Chemex? I've got some more. Eric, are you getting that? Is he uh, hearing me? Uh, are we, uh, lose, we, we lose our connection? Metal filters. Yeah, what do you um, think of metal filters for the Chemex? There is uh, the, I feel they get a little warm. I just feel they get a little warm, they get a little too hot and somewhat overheats the water maybe and adds almost a metallic taste or 
something to me just kind of, it overheats uh, something. It gives almost a bitter tinge to me. Something that's not, I don't know, something mm -hmm. that we don't really like for sure. I've used the reusable filters with these and the sediment alone is a different texture. The body's two million percent different. So, I don't know, just not it. <laughs> I, I, uh, in fact, I think we're gonna, we have a couple that just arrived. In, oh, we good, uh, do you have any questions, yes. Pat? Oh, we got a couple of more questions, Eric. If you've got, do you have time to take sure. them? Okay. Oh yeah, I love questions. Coleman <laughs> wants to know where did you get that coffee from? Alfred Coleman wants to know where, oh, one of our uh, friends on Face, on uh, YouTube. Where did you get that? The warmer? Warmer, yeah. I would say <laughs> I wanted to eBay. Know eBay. Just keep looking on eBay. Look literally every day, every oh. week, one will pop up. Yeah. Um, and some people want a lot of money, but I haven't paid more than $60, $70 and normally in the box. So, I mean, trust me, they're, they're widely available on eBay, which is really awesome. I probably have about 13 of them, but now I need to find some type of older, uh, they burn out. So I need to find some kind of older fuse wire that they used to use it. I'm looking for because I can fix about anything. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, now uh, Alfred Coleman and I are going to be bidding against each other on eBay next week. So anyway, that's uh, no <laughs> nothing new. Uh, Pat, a uh, uh, quick story. I, I've got a lot of stories. So uh, one of them is uh, Pat and I went to a coffee uh, auction once, coffee museum auction, and we were both bidding against each other on a Michael Civet's <laughs> heat gun roaster. Oh, and, cool! That and that was cool. Oh, cool, totally cool. And she, uh, she was, uh, she outbid me. She won it, and of course it's mine. But I mean, it was just Ed Kavetko from Gloria Jeans was there, and he noticed it, and he gave me this smirk. <laughs> anyway, uh, back to oh, another question. Get all fluid bed, right? Okay. Jacqueline, wa Jacqueline on, uh, on, on Vimeo wants to know, can you use a coffee sock? Mm -hmm. a co uh, can you use a sock as a filter okay. in the Chemex? Oh, yeah. You can use anything you like, for sure. You can use coffee socks. You can use metal filters. You can use a Chemex filter. Um, I mean, I've seen people use old T-shirts at the moment that couldn't get filters for a minute you know what i'm saying if it's strictly only used for that and after a few brews what's different than that than a coffee sock so i mean yeah anything can be is it going to brew the chemix brew no but it's going to be brewed in a chemix that's for sure but it's it's seriously all about that filter right there it's it it, it, it's all about that. <laughs> the opinions of Mr. Stogsdill are his own and right. not necessarily those it, of the management here. <laughs> it, it, and you know what? Hey, and, and that's what opinions are all about, to make everybody <laughs> unique. Some people don't like the Kimmick. Some people like Eclita, Some. That's what makes us amazing. Yeah. We are all amazing. It makes us a community. <laughs> Who cares what we use? We're all making coffee. It's the best. <laughs> That's why we're here. Have fun and love of coffee. Yeah. That's just the best. That's what yeah. it comes down to. That's what the Chemex is made for. Coffee Any, anything and else? community. What is their flavor profile difference okay. from B60 One, versus the Chemex? Oh, uh, uh, this one's easy uh, for Eric. I'll have no problem. Uh, is there a flavor? <laughs> if you could, if you could uh, give us a sketch of the uh, Lynn Wood asks, uh, about the flavor profile difference between a V60 and the Chemex. I feel with the Chemex, you're definitely going to get a lot smoother, more velvety texture out of the body of the coffee alone. Um, I used to be a Hario freak. I get, I feel a little more brighter notes from something like a Hario or something like a, uh, a V60 or whatnot. Oh, sorry, Kalitas and all that, but you're going to get a smoother texture. You're going to get that unique, just smooth, amazing, full aroma, full body cup out of that filter alone, for sure. Others, you're going to get a body and coffee for sure, but you're not going to get what I'm drinking right here. This is, this is special. One more question. Velvety smooth. One sure. more question. Round versus the square filter. Any Okay, I love that question. Thank you for asking that. I believe, and I'm not sure if any others do, and I really appreciate this question more than anything, because they're 
two different filters, I believe, and I don't know why. These brew slower, and the rounded cut without these lips, they brew ultimately faster at my shop. I have to brew on a 10 to get it to brew on these, and I have to grind at a nine on my EK to brew through the, the, the cut filters. So uh, I thank you so much for that question. I would love to ask gimmicks if they feel there's a difference, why there's a difference. Is it because of any point? It has something to do with science, the way that heat evacuates? Not sure, but I assure you, the ones that are cut, they brew faster. They definitely do. They're not a different mm -hmm. filter. Mm -hmm. But I promise they do. <laughs> Great question. Thank you for that. Well, there <laughs> Maybe was, we'll get an answer to it from Kimmich. That was uh, <laughs> that, that was yeah. Well, I think we'll, you'll get a letter from Kimmich. Uh, the uh, uh, I hope. that was from uh, Jeremy Wood, right? Or is that that somebody else? Okay, we, I'm sorry. I wanted to make sure we I credited the person who asked it, but I I may have gotten it or may not. We moved down the page mm. on our uh, stream. Uh, anyway, well, he got his answer. <laughs> yeah, it is an answer. It's a very cool answer too. And you know what? It makes me think. I use the square filters, and that's one reason I grind coarser because I do think they flow. S this is a. I mean, <laughs> this is awesome. This is the first thing right? today that is just out of the box. Slammed it, man. Yes. You you named it. I, they I are different. It. We we can yes, start a 100%. whole cool internet rumor about this. Yeah. I don't know. I'm sure I have a feeling Cam I I'm I I should predict, but I have a feeling that uh, I'm going to get a call from Chemex on uh, Monday and saying We may hear more about this, which yeah, is cool. It, it, it is cool <laughs> that there's no difference. It's the same paper, it's just cut differently, but I don't believe it and I know oh, you don't either. I, yeah, no, they're not. Uh, I different. love you for that. And I <laughs> love who asked that question seriously yeah. because that that that's like a debunker that I need to that's something about chemics I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> okay, there is one more question. Somebody Christian just, they're, they're getting, Co who is this? Christian. Chris Christian Bevins. Christian Bevins is asking, any difference between the bleached and unbleached chemex filters? For sure. Um, one, I don't believe they're bleached. I believe the one wonderful thing about a chemix filter is that yeah. they're oxygenated, right. which is a different way of whitening, a uh, cleaner way. Uh, so I don't believe they're bleached, but yes, I do believe that a brown Chemex smells like a paper bag. I don't care if I pre-wet it for 10 yep. minutes before I brew. It's going to have a paper taste, I assure you. Guaranteed. Who, who, hasn't, <laughs> who hasn't gotten out of the supermarket? You come out of Ralph's late at night and you got a, a, a bag, and even in Southern California, it's raining like crazy. <laughs> and you get you get you drive all the way home and you can you know the back of your hatchback you can smell the paper and that is the taste oh, yeah. i get yeah. in in natural filters 100%. generally i'm sorry 100%. and i yeah bleached i'm against of course but as, he, as eric pointed out they're not bleaching them anymore they're using uh, uh they're using oxygenated so it's, it's a issue. different process not for issue sure. to me yeah so I other right. than I other than I really want to just taste coffee and to me uh, so my favorite is you know I don't want to exaggerate it too much but I, I prefer the, the the white filters so myself by far okay we're, totally. uh, we're, we're good people are asking about the automatic chemex I don't have one right now so I don't know I don't have I've the never automatic. brewed in one it it looks pretty similar to something like a Technivorm. Um, looks, I, you know, it's a pour over system. It's, you got an arm, it's, it's relinquishing water. I mean, it's a cool design, I feel, um, you know. It was, it was- uh, I love it, my pour overs. <laughs> it, was it was designed- <laughs> kind of branded for life. It was designed in Ireland, I know, originally. I don't know if they still make them there, uh, but it was a, I, I don't have one currently. But it's a uh, yeah. There there is a there is an earlier model as you know anyone into vintage knows. There's an earlier automatic that was actually from the second. I thought it was Patrick Grassi actually did the second one, the one that's the you know what I'm talking about, the vintage yeah, one. Yeah, not the not the one. Not Norelco. What's the company? Yes, yeah, so, yeah, it's so, a very uh, Phillips, famous it company Phillips, that made Phillips, it. Phillips made it. Okay. And and the interesting thing about it is, 
I it had inter <laughs> interval brewing. In other words, it poured like you would pour a pour over where you just, it was designed to emulate, to mimic that pouring action. Almost a pulse. Yeah, like yeah, a pulse, pulsing. Right, definitely. right. Definitely. Which, of course, later, the exactly, the uh, commercial brewers came out with it uh, you know, 10, 20 years later and uh, gave it a fancier name. But it was, yeah, it was designed to emulate how you would pan pour. So it's, and it was actually, yeah, it was actually just a normal coffee maker aside of that, but then they made that to fit the Kimmix under it as well and put a different type of uh, brewing head on it too, and then came out for the Kimmix because before that they had some like a select brew and it was a, it was a coffee maker, and I have that in the box and I have the Kimmix one too. I love love all that old stuff. <laughs> I, I I do too. And uh, anyway, oh Eric, it's making me want to come out to LA and see you and. Uh, D Man, definitely. I wish you could drink some of this Kimmix. It's so smooth. I, Man, I, I hate to <laughs> see leftover. I'm about leftover. to share it, I promise. Yeah, I hate to see leftover coffee. Oh, it's not getting coffee. left over. No, <laughs> it's not getting left over. Just no, the grounds in there. <laughs> well, everyone enjoy it there today, uh, and uh, I will, we'll, we'll do it soon. And meanwhile, this is a great presentation. I really appreciate you coming out and, and, and driving and uh, doing it. Thank you. I I appreciate being invited and along with the other people putting on lectures and uh, everything. I, I'm more than, more than grateful to be here amongst them. I, I appreciate you and I really have, I love Coffee Con to death. Oh. So we need it back in LA, not virtually, in the real. <laughs> I, uh, every, uh, I totally agree. We're, we're, we're there the moment that we get the all clear to do it. And uh, anyway, thank you again, Eric. and. Uh, Bless your family, you and we'll see you me. soon. Yeah, okay. thank you. Right on. You guys rock. And don't forget pour overs for life. <laughs> <laughs> Did we? I hope we got the money shot on. <laughs> All right, yeah. thank you, thank you, Eric.